everybody, it's Miriam Zacharias here, and I'm excited to be speaking with my good friend, Dr. Tom O'Brien, who's going to be one of our pre-conference workshops this, this year's NANP conference. Welcome, Tom. So great to have you, you here. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to work with NANP. You guys are the boots on the ground for all the great ideas that every researcher comes out with. How do you implement this? And that's where NAMP comes in and training people uh, with the skill set to take, carry all this information out into the world. So it's a real oh, pleasure to be with you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. And of course, you're one of those people we we're bringing in for that very purpose. So um, this year's pre-conference workshop, I want you to tell me a little bit about what you're going to be teaching us. And you bet. why you feel it's so important for our industry to hear you this year. You bet. You bet. We call it the Certified Gluten Practitioner uh, Workshop. And it's a day about wheat and wheat-related disorders. Uh, I'll just, you know, when I make a comment about the CGP program, uh, people say, oh, I know all about wheat. I said, really? So, yeah, yeah, I know all about wheat. All right, well, tell me then. Why is it that someone diagnosed with celiac disease, an adult diagnosed with celiac disease, has a 78% increased risk of mortality from cardiovascular incidents in the first year after diagnosis compared to someone not diagnosed with celiac disease. And a 3.86 increased risk of mortality from cancer in the first year after diagnosis. Do you know why that is? <laughs> and this confused look comes over their face and I say, great, you need the program. <laughs> <laughs> Because a gluten-free diet is not the treatment for wheat-related disorders. It is the prerequisite to treatment. Obviously, you have to stop throwing gasoline on the fire. But what is the damage that has accrued to this point that has a life of its own and rears its ugly head when you stop eating wheat? So that's mm -hmm. one thing. I mean, children diagnosed with celiac disease have a threefold increased risk of suicide compared to children not diagnosed with celiac disease. I mean, there's all these statistics that are just jaw-dropping, terrible, terrible statistics. And, and they, my goal- We need to know those, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. My goal is that people know this and they know how to avoid all of that. Because mm -hmm. clearly, if you have a sensitivity to wheat, you're gonna benefit by, by getting wheat out of your diet, but you have to know how to do it without putting yourself at increased risk of mortality and more illness. That's the kicker here, mm. is that our, our narrow version has been, well, you're sensitive and we get off wheat. And then we let them go on with their lives. But now we know that increases their morbidity and their mortality. Mm. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that every laboratory in the world, when they're checking for a sensitivity to wheat, looks at alpha glidin. It's a 33 uh, amino acid peptide. That is one of 62 peptides that have been identified as immunogenic from per poorly digested wheat. That's one of 62. So if you do a blood test that, uh, to test a person for a wheat sensitivity and it comes back negative to gluten, is it okay for them to eat wheat? And the answer is absolutely not because all you can say is you don't have a reaction to alpha gliden. Mm. That's all you can say. You can't say you don't have a reaction to wheat because it, you haven't checked the omega glidins, the gamma glidins, the glutenins, the gluteomorphins, the wheat amylase trypsin inhibitors known <laughs> to cause miscarriages, the um, uh, uh, lectins called wheat germaglutinins. You know, for those of you that have read The Plant Paradox, the lectins in wheat are the wheat germ agglutinins. And so we need more accurate testing and there are much better tests out now. So we talk about all that and how to interpret the tests and what are the manifestations of a wheat related disorder. And you know, it goes on and on. It's a jaw dropping day. Yeah, again, you, again, your, your workshops are always, people come out of there with like, you know, their brains have grown <laughs> in, in eight it's hours. An OMG. It's and, an OMG and it's, workshop. It's like, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> right? It's fantastic, it's and I, obviously, um, you're not too pa passionate about this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just said to you before we did this recording that I just came back from doing this workshop in Australia, 
and I learned something, and that was, and I, for the first time, I said to people, you know, you're going to be overwhelmed. It's okay to be overwhelmed. You're not going to learn all this in one day. If you give yourself permission just to get the big picture and then allocate one hour a week to this, just one hour a week in six months, you've really got this. Okay, you've so really to, got it. So to that point then, what will they get? What is the one big takeaway since it is, it's complex, there's a lot to learn. So ideally they, everybody will go back and continue, but what will they walk away with? What will they really, how will it transform their work? And their understanding? Oh, really good question. Uh, it differentiates who needs a wheat free um, eating pattern lifestyle and who doesn't. Now, mm -hmm. you're going to learn, and there are many studies on That's this, huge. that every, every human has a problem with wheat. Every human uh, gets intestinal permeability every time they eat wheat. And you'll see the videos. Within five minutes, here comes the permeability. And we've got the video showing when it happens. Mm -hmm. These come from Harvard. And you, your, your jaw drops when you see this. And it's every time you eat wheat. But as we all know, the fastest growing cells in the body, Mrs. Patient, you regenerate your whole body every seven years, but the fastest growing cells are the inside lining of the gut every three to five days. So you eat wheat, you tear the lining of the gut, but it heals. You eat wheat, you tear the lining of the gut, but it heals. A toast for breakfast, sandwich for lunch, pasta for dinner, croutons on your salad, a cookie, tear the lining, it heals, tear the lining, it heals. And what you're gonna learn is how to identify what's called a loss of oral tolerance. When you don't heal anymore, you've lost tolerance to wheat. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you get pathogenic intestinal permeability. Now you've got the leaky gut, which is the gateway in the development of autoimmune diseases. So here comes MS or rheumatoid or lupus or Alzheimer's. And we'll go through all of the studies on this that lay it out clearly so that what you walk away with is an understanding of the dynamic of what happens to every human. And then how to identify if they've crossed the line of oral tolerance. And these are the people that have to go wheat free now. Mm. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. There is a million dollar workshop. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. You know, it, it, change, it changes people's practices mm. because after that, there is no question in their mind. You can go toe to toe with any gastroenterologist because mm. you get all the studies, you get all this information and you understand the mechanism and you'll be able to explain it to your patients in simple everyday language and not geek out on them. Mm. You know, I, I'm, I'm gonna geek out on you, but then I'm also <laughs> going to put it in everyday language. Right, so we have that, to. So, right, so that you can de develop your, uh, your elevator speech of what, what is a leaky gut, why is there a problem with wheat, is the old style wheat, the, the ancient grains okay. Um, you'll develop your elevator speech for every one of these questions that you'll get again and again and again. But you'll come from the place of inner knowing. You've got the answers because you've also got the studies that identify the answers. Right. Hugely critical, especially when talking to allied conventional types of practitioners and people mired in that conventional medical model. This is going to be a phenomenal workshop. I'm so glad we have brought you in to do it again for us. Um, I know that people are going to get a lot of great information. So thank you. Thank you, Tom. And um, just want people to head up to the site, learn a little bit more, and to register to get in to make sure you get a seat into this amazing workshop. So, you bet. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we will see you in May. You bet.